here I am at it again, and today I've got the latest intro on Distro Hunt, and uh, this is Scepter, which is a distribution that focuses on internet privacy. So uh, I was excited about this, thought about getting my tinfoil hat on, but hey, I'm having another bad hair day, so I figured I would, uh, you know, dispense with the tinfoil and uh, go on with a distro presentation. All right, here it is. This is Scepter. And um, when I uh, when this came under my radar, I figured, okay, great. We've got another distribution like Kadashi. I thought Kadashi was quite interesting because it had all these utilities and that sort of thing. I went to load this up into a virtual machine, and I could not, unfortunately, get the Tor browser to work because it wasn't actually even installed in the live image. It wanted to download uh, the browser, and then after the download had completed, it wouldn't run. So I had to physically install this in a virtual machine uh, in order to get this to work. Um, that is the only drawback that I got with this. Now, uh, don't let that put you away from trying this, though. This is a complete desktop operating system using a KDE Plasma, and um, this is using uh, Debian. Now, uh, I swapped out the uh, default launcher in favor of this, uh, of this uh, alternative uh, launcher because it's easier for me to go through the applications and that sort of thing. The default KDE uh, launcher app, I re really don't care much for. But I would love to see um, Whisker Menu come to uh, KDE. That would be the cat's meow, definitely. Complete desktop operating system in every right. Every all, Most of the graphics tools that you would need, some internet tools. So if you need to uh, chat on IRC, you can do that. Um, you also have uh, instant messaging tools for those of you who need that. Uh, Thunderbird mail client, um, Onion Share. But uh, the Tor browser is the icing of the cake, and that's uh, and that's what they're uh, really uh, out to uh, promote with this distribution. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, you have a number of multimedia tools, so this will pretty much cut up any video or uh, multimedia uh, files that you uh, have in your arsenal there. Uh, you have a full office suite included with this. Of course, everything that you want to do customize the system system can be uh, customized from here and uh, as you know uh, nothing beats KDE in terms of customizing this and making it your own so um, if you want to go with um, a dark theme I love my dark themes you've got that included in there uh, ready to roll for you so that's good stuff indeed okay uh, let's uh, move right along here um, a few other system tools are included in here to allow you to get the most out of this, some utilities, um, help, and uh, your session control is right here. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the Tor browser. As indicated, this would not work for me in live mode. I have no idea why um, I had that issue, but that was driving me nuts because uh, one of the things that uh, one of my viewers in the Cup of Linux forum swears by, and I think it's CWF that mentions this all the time, uh, that they like to actually uh, take a live disk and run that in a virtual machine when they want to privatize their internet sessions. And I was thinking this would probably be a good distribution for that. So in setting up a, uh, a virtual machine with 4 gigs of RAM, um, unfortunately, I could not get the live image of Scepter to run the Tor browser until I actually installed this OS in that virtual machine, and then it would work. And uh, it works very well, from what I can tell here. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and find out what my IP address is. And DuckDuckGo says your IP address is unavailable. Well, hey, how do you like that? <laughs> so this is doing what they, you know, said that they were going to do with this. So, yeah. Um, no, I don't want to allow data access. So it's saying that I'm in um, location Kiev, UA, wherever that is. And uh, 10 minutes ago, it said I was in England. 
So I thought that was kind of neat. And then, of course, uh, they have this has uh, HTTPS everywhere built into the web browser. And it looks like they also have no script thrown in here. So you can literally, um, you know, uh, you know, cover your trail, cover your tracks, that sort of thing. Nothing is 100% foolproof here, though. Um, when you are uh, using uh, a browser such as the such as this, yes, you can uh, protect your you know IP address and and most things, but it does slow down your uh, browsing. Personally, I prefer to go with a VPN, and I choose private internet access for that, and it works seems to work just fine for me. But this is also a good option for you guys as well. So at the end of the day, uh, Scepter does deliver in terms of providing a decent desktop environment that I can see. Uh, this looks like it's a perfect uh, Debian testing based OS for your everyday uh, desktop computing needs. Matthew, this might be something worth having a look at on your ancient uh, hardware. I know Matthews really wants to run Linux, but it doesn't seem to want to work on any of his computers. So, hey, maybe this might be a good option for you. I don't know. Uh, but at any rate, uh, if you think this is something that you want to uh, give a try, uh, definitely click the link in the description, download this, and uh, give it a whirl for yourself. Um, uh, personally, for a KDE desktop, uh, I'm going to have to say Nutrunner or Manjaro are still my favorites for KDE. But, you know, that's just a personal preference and uh, that sort of thing. You know, everybody's got their own uh, preferences, their own uh, choices and flavors of different things they want to try. So, um, uh, for some of you out there, this may be... This may be the distro that rocks your world as your daily driver. I don't know what I'm going to be covering next on Cup of Linux, but I'm sure I'll have something equally exciting. So until next time, please take a little bit of your time and be excellent with someone today. We'll see you some other time. Peace out. Mm -hmm.